If you are a Salesforce developer appearing for Salesforce interview, these questions are for you. Number one, I have a validation rule that if field one value is test, then throw an error. Now I have updated the status of the record. Because of that workflow rule is fired, which is going to update the field one value to test. In this case, will the validation rule fire? So basically I have a validation rule. Because of workflow rule, what's going to happen is that the value of the field will be test. Okay, because of that validation rule usually used to get fired. Okay, it should get fired. But if you see the order of execution is first, the custom validation usually gets executed. Okay, and after that workflow rule gets executed. But if you make an update in the workflow rule, in that cases, uh, the overall execution will again start. But you have to take care of these things is that it won't execute duplicate rules, validation rules. Okay, so if workflow rules is going to update any kind of field, it's not going to execute again the duplicate rules or validation rule. Only thing that it's going to execute is before triggers and after triggers. So in case if you want to throw an error message, don't do it inside the validation rule. Instead, use triggers. So the answer to this question is no. Validation rule won't get fired because in, as soon as the workflow rule gets updated, it does not execute duplicate rules or validation rule, but it executes before triggers and after triggers. So let's move on to the next question. I have five triggers on one object, which is going to execute first. Now, if you have five triggers on an object, the order of execution is not defined at all. That is the reason why Salesforce does not recommend. Salesforce recommends to use one object, one trigger per object. Basically, you should not use five triggers because the order of execution won't be defined and that that can lead to the recursion and all that stuff. So if you're having five triggers on an object, the execution is not defined. Okay, any trigger or any class would execute first. So let's move on to the next question. Why learning order of execution is important. First of all is to write the efficient code. Okay, first of all is to write the efficient code. So if you already know the order of execution, sometimes you can write efficient code. For an example, right now, as we saw in the first example, we are going to fire an error message, but we are doing it within the validation rule. But instead, if we would have done it before inside the before trigger or after trigger, basically before triggers, if we would have done it, it would be an efficient code and it would have been working code as well. So if you understand the order of execution, you can write an efficient code. And one of the most important thing, which I have personally feel the uh, the benefit of learning the order of execution is nothing but debugging. Okay, this is one of the most important thing. If you know the order of execution, you can easily catch up with recursive issue or recursion issue or all this kind of issue. What kind of issues are happening? Why this field value is getting updated? All these things can be easily defined if you know the order of execution by heart. So this was all about the interview questions that I've discussed in the previous shot. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.